everyone wants to build AI agents now. This being the year where we see more and more AI agents. But how should you do it? When do you need an AI agent? And what are the best practices? I'm going to be straight to the point and answer this as fast as possible using my own experience having both AI solutions, both in open source and professionally, and as a contributor to Langgraph. I'm not an expert, but this is such a new field that hardly anyone is. Make sure you watch till the end as I'll be sharing some tips and best practices for creating effective AI agents. Here's a hot take. You probably don't need an AI agent. <gasps> Everyone on LinkedIn is raving about agents now as the solution to any AI related problem, but for a lot of them, they are overkill. According to Anthropic, the company that develops Claude, arguably the best LLM for coding, when developing an AI solution, always use the simplest solution possible. This might be a predefined workflow instead of an agent. Agentic systems often trade latency and cost for better task performance. Consider when this trade-off makes sense. Basically, start simple, make it work, and increase complexity as needed. In my opinion, this is the most important philosophy in AI engineering. So when should we use AI agents? Agents can be used for open-ended problems where it's difficult or impossible to predict required number of steps in the workflow, such as optimizing a stock market portfolio or a chatbot. I'm leaving some GitHub repo links in the description of uh, some good AI agent use cases. Okay, so how do we build an AI agent? Frameworks like Langchain and Langgraph are abstractions, and Anthropic recommends you create an agent from scratch using LLM APIs directly. It's really not that hard, but I recommend beginners to get started with Langgraph in Python. So let's go through how to create a Langgraph agent. So in Langgraph, we have something called state. This is like a shared blackboard where all parts of our agent can read and write information. And this is crucial for passing data between nodes. So we also have what's called a graph. Now this is just a way to represent relationships between the different elements in our agent. Nodes are the workers in our graph. So they each perform a specific task. We can have a node that calls a certain tool like Tavoli Search, uh, which will search the web to help solve the problem. Let's say you work in sales or business development. You want to find people within specific companies, get their contact info, and then send them an email. You can have one node that searches on Tavoli for companies within your industry and finds people you should contact. Another node can find the website of this company and capture any relevant context about them. One node calls an API to get the contact info on these people. Another node puts this info into your CRM. You have a node that creates a text using the info that you captured, pitching your product. And finally, a node that sends them an email with that text. This is a basic outreach or a business development agent. Next, we have to define the graph's logic using edges. Edges define the flow of execution between nodes. Think of them as arrows on your flowcharts. They dictate the flow of execution from one node to the next. An edge simply says, once this node is done, send the state to this next node. Now, edges themselves are always defined as potential paths. You have to define all the possible routes your agent might take. You can have direct edges, which represents a path that will always be taken when the preceding node finishes. You also have conditional edges, and these represent a set of mutually exclusive paths. Only one of these will be taken at a given time based on a decision logic that is often powered by the LLM. Finally, we build and compile our graph. Using state graph, we define the workflow using our defined state, nodes, and edges. Think of this as the blueprint for our workflow. So that's the basic workflow of creating an agent. And here are some best practices and tips that I've learned from personal experience. Start with the best model you can find. Make something that works, then keep downgrading the model to a cheaper one until the results aren't good enough. This way you optimize cost, speed, and performance. You can use OpenRouter to easily switch between multiple LLMs super quickly by just changing an argument in your code. Use structured output whenever possible. You can force nodes to output JSON data to each other, which will make them use less tokens and make it easier to integrate with other software. If you need to access structured data, use the SQL database connector tool from Langchain. Make sure to give your SQL user appropriate permissions so that the LLM doesn't accidentally drop your database. 
For advanced queries, you can feed the LLM a boilerplate SQL query to help it figure out what query to execute. You generally want to give the agent a narrow scope of responsibility, and each LLM call should also generally do one thing. So if you want to take some notes in English and generate a blog post in Portuguese, one LLM call should generate the blog post and one should do the translation. This also makes it much easier to test. Also, prioritize transparency by explicitly showing the agent's planning steps. And that's it. If this video was helpful to you, then make sure to give it a like and feel free to comment if anything was unclear. Let me know if you'd like a follow-up video introducing some more advanced concepts such as cost and token optimization, multi-agent architecture, and evaluating performance. Now, if you want to build an AI agent that actually solves a real business problem and start developing your AI portfolio, I have a YouTube course where I teach you to develop a real estate AI agent. And I have multiple issues available on GitHub, which you can solve and become a contributor for an AI project with 50 stars in GitHub. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later.